ghetto msali tuno respecto sharia mna kwa wazimu pia na half furasi sio mfano ukabila ndio kwa hapo chafika kweli na hakika kadiri na chika fura kwa lahiki ndio kwa shabiki baji kuziki bif na fiki hit na fiki muda muda wiki mimi na hizi split ni mukiki na basiki kwa makini fulisa chima la silly feel me In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the host or the gatekeeper of this program known here on social media and around the planet because the internet does take us around the earth. <laughs> I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, angel snub number seven. I am your soul brother number one and your friend Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to take a few minutes and I would like to direct this uh, message towards my young brothers who I uh, assume is in this struggle that we call black revolution, this struggle we call black liberation. Whatever it is, it's a struggle for us, we who are the descendants <clears throat> of slaves born in America having dark skin. Regardless to your personal preference, you are comedic, you are Hebrew Israelite, you are black Muslim, you are black Christian, you are atheist, agnostic, wherever you find yourself, if you fit into that category, Whereas you are a descendant of slaves born in America having dark skin, that should all, that's all that we should rally around. That's all you should be concerned about. All these other what I think I am, you really, you really, and I really should put them a little to the side. I know they are important to you, but these who are the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. We in this nation are under attack and have been under attack. We have been at war with a vicious beast going on 500 years. This is the reason why I exist. This is the reason of why the brothers of whom I am mentioning in this video, this is why they exist. Because if we were not under attack, if we were not in a war, in a battle, there would be no need for myself to exist. There would be no need for a young Pharaoh. There would be no need for a young Marcus, except in a different type of light, a different uh, position that we find ourselves in our community but we find ourselves where we are right now because these of whom we are birthed from continue to suffer injustice we are denied freedom and equality so with that said I could be considered your elder. In fact, I am your elder. And this is speaking, of course, anyone can listen to this video, but I'm directing my thoughts to young Pharaoh and young Marcus. In fact, all of you brothers and sisters who have a certain amount of youth. I myself 
although I'm your elder, I will be considered what they call middle age. Those who dislike me call me an old man. Those who dislike me, they call me an old man. And in most cases, I look younger and probably much healthier than they are. Silly, silly people. How are you going to change your condition having an infantile mind? I'm coming and speaking to young Pharaoh and young Marcus because I perceive these brothers, although they have youth, they have a certain amount of maturity because if they were not mature in the mind, there are not or would not be older people by the thousands it seems listening to them. So I want to reach out and talk to Brother Young Farrell and Brother Marcus and again all of you younger people. I am so impressed. I am so happy that you are in the struggle. I am so happy that you are interested in the condition of our people who have yet to become a people. That's your number one problem. Ever since the slaves were physically released from bondage by the pink races all those many years ago. Although we are called a people, my people, we are not a my people. We are groups of individuals that have become scattered all over this nation. So you belong to this group. You belong to that group. I belong to this group. You think this way. I think that way. We are numerous various divisions as groups of people, but not as a collective. We are not a people. We have the same uh, common problems and we have the same common enemy. But yet and still, we are not a people, and we should unite and rally around the fact that we do have a common problem. We look similar, act and behave similar, and above all, we have a common enemy that we all know have been trying for countless years seeking our inevitable or eventual destruction. They, it seems as though they have been successful upon us mentally. But of course, that's not good enough. I don't want to see you at all. So, the things that I'm saying right now, we, we are familiar and we know. I want to speak to these brothers, especially our younger people who follow and listen to your elders. I'm your elder, but you will not probably listen to me because I'm in the wrong place to be real. I'm not going to tell you fairy tales so that you can feel good. I'm not going to tell you stories and make claims of a history I know that we had nothing to do with. We, you may be related to your mother. Of course. <laughs> you may be related to your father. Of course. They're your parents. But you cannot claim their history. How can you claim a history when you did not even exist? So your father bought a car in 1964. You were not born until 1968. How are you going to claim a car in 1964 when you were not even born? Of course, that car may be passed down to you, but you had nothing to do with the history. You were not there when the car was bought. You were not there for the first 100,000 miles it was driven. You did not exist. And this is our problem, trying to claim things 
that we had nothing to do with because we're not creating a history ourselves that we can be proud of. I want to talk to you, young Pharaoh. I want to talk to you, Brother Marcus. I don't want to take a, a lot of your time, but I would hope that you could bear with me within the next few minutes, less than an hour. Could you give your brother an hour? Let us talk. Also, for those who really would like to converse, my telephone number is in the description box of this video. My email is in the description box of this video. There is nobody that have called myself that I did not speak with. And I try to be uh, courteous and civil and respectful, no matter what your opinion may be. Because I understand that our belief, that gives us um, the inspiration, the encouragement to carry on. And if you need that, then so be it. I have no problem with that. However, please allow me to critique these things. Because at one time, I was like yourself. I was a black Muslim. I was a black power family. I was a, a black Christian. Most, uh, I was black. I don't even call myself black anymore. So, I was there. I walked in those steps. I'm familiar with all those things. I am not new. I have been in this struggle. I have been familiar with this condition ever since I was a little boy. And I want you to listen, Brother uh, Marcus and Brother Farah Allah. Listen to me. I want to tell you a little bit of my story so that you can apply it to yourself. I don't know where in the struggle the teachings or whom you listen to to, to inspire you in order to participate in the struggle but my uh, influence my start, my genesis began with the nation of Islam around, I would say, maybe eight or nine years old, I could, I always have been able to read pretty well. So it could have been even younger. And the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in those books, Message to the Black Man in America, The Fall of America, and so forth, all of his books are written very simply. You don't have to be a PhD you don't have to have a master's degree. You don't even have to have a, a high school education to understand what is written in the books called uh, Message to the Black Man in America and all the books written by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I began my journey in the nation of Islam. And I was born during the Jim Crow era, I was born in a town that they pronounced Slater, but my relatives told me that the correct pronunciation of the town was really slaughter because in that town where I was born, these crackers, these devils killed many a black people. I was born and raised in Mississippi, one of the most racist states in this union. And I was born with dark skin. You may see me now, actually, I'm darker than what you see. Because I have been out of the sunlight for many years. And I was denied being out in the sun. Actually, I have lightened. My skin tone has lightened. But I was a very, very dark-skinned person. My mother is very dark-skinned. 
and my father is very dark skinned people. But when I was growing up, this dark skin was made mockery of. In fact, this is how sick our people was. As dark skinned as my mother is, because she's still uh, in this life, so I can say she is. As dark skinned as she is, she would get angry at me and make mockery of how black or dark skinned I was. <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that something else? This shows you how, now this is self-hatred. And as a little boy, I was made mockery because I was so dark skinned and I would cry and wonder, well, why, you know, I have no control. Why do people make you mockery and laugh at people with dark skin? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when I was introduced, those teachings gave me the answers to all my inquiries. And that was sufficient, listen, that was sufficient for me at that time when I was a child. And so I took those teachings and ran with those teachings. And I wanted to learn more and more than I began to uh, explore uh, African American. Actually, at that time, it was Negro history. Later, it would become black history, Negro history. And even as a child, the only thing on my mind was the injustice, the hate, the discrimination, the things that was going on with my people, those who looked like me. And at one time, Prior to reading the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I used to sit back in the cut and draw the American flag all day long. I, used, I was very patriotic until I was taught and understood what that flag meant. Then I began to hate that flag. Mind you, I still think it's a nice flag. The stars and the stripes and the stars. I think it's a beautifully designed flag, but what it represents, I hate. Even to this day, I still think that it's a nice, pretty flag, but what it represents, I hate. So, as a child alone, there was no black power of adults around me. None. Absolutely nobody. There was nobody even like those who followed Dr. King around me. I was by myself alone. But when they asked me to stand up and put my uh, hand on my heart and pledge allegiance to the flag and all that stuff, I refused. And I kept refusing even until my team all by myself. So, see, since you don't like Pharaoh Allah, since you don't like Brother Young Marcus, you don't like myself, you don't like nobody, nobody pleases you, then you can stand up by yourself. But most of these people who may critique Pharaoh Allah or Brother Marcus or the House of Cautionists or in the black media, King Noel, and the list goes on and on, and my brother Sarah Sudan Seti, those who critique us, most of them are doing absolutely nothing. However, if I do something that's beneficial, Sarasun said he does something beneficial, or young Marcus, or young Farrell, or whoever, if we do something that's beneficial, they wouldn't mind joining and, and, and being part of the benefit. But at the same time, remember, they was running their mouth. This ain't gonna work. That, that 
thing. That don't sound right. You stupid. So, young Marcus and uh, Brother Farallah, this is the type of mentality that you have to deal with. But clearly, as a child, as a child, I did not have that mentality. I'm serious as a heart attack. And I took the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I challenged adults and was smashing preachers and teachers and all kinds of folks. But you know, you got to grow up. You have to grow up. Your experience makes you mature. Certain information that you come in contact with makes you mature. You begin to change your whole mindset. So I did join the Nation of Islam under the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the early 80s. And something was wrong. And the something that was wrong is because now that I'm, I'm 18 years old, I'm not the same person that I was when I was 10. And I have never been loyal. Listen, I've never been loyal to nobody. I don't care how famous you are. I don't care nothing about you can speak so pretty and, and all this. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the liberation of the people, I'm interested in the truth. And I'm growing up and I'm and maturing and I'm understanding that although Nation of Islam teachings was good for me when I was a child, in need to have somewhere to start, I have matured and I've gone beyond that. Because I'm not your robot and I'm not your slave. I'm not going to be a slave to Caucasian people and I'm not going to be a slave to some Negro who talk about, I saved your life. You ain't saved no damn body. I have a right to know that I'm living under oppression. I have a right to know. You have a right to tell me that something is wrong as an adult person. I don't owe you anything. That's what an adult person is supposed to do. And since I am, a, I am in a savage-like condition, since you are civilized, under your teachings, you taught or you teach, the nation of Islam teaches, the duty of the civilized man is to teach the uncivilized. So I'm uncivilized. You as a civilized man, you teach me so that I can be free of the shackles, not to become your damn slave. I'm growing up. That was the problem, the main problem that Malcolm X had with the nation of Islam, that Malcolm was growing up. He was growing beyond the nation of Islam. That's where the problem started. And he thought that he could work within the nation in order to express himself. But like so many religious and political organizations, they go to a certain point and they stop. They don't, and that's it. Because I, I know it all. You can't tell me nothing. So you have an attitude, you know it all. Nobody can't tell you nothing. What is your what is your condition? What have you accomplished? Well, the nation of Islam failed. One man died. And the whole organization goes to pieces. What does that tell you about the followers? They was nothing but robots. They was nothing but personality followers and slaves. That's all they was. You brag about and you should praise Marcus Garvey. One man. You say that the UNIA had at least 7 million members. One man is deported. And the whole thing fall apart. What does that tell you 
about the, the followers of Marcus Garvey, the followers of the Nation of Islam. And it continues to this day. A bunch of personality followers, worshippers, a bunch of zombies, a bunch of robots. And that is something young Pharaoh, young Marcus, this is something that you should not want. You should want the people and you should want the people and yourself to be put in a position you can act on your own with or without some leader or some teaching. Because as you mature, you may find that that train of thought, those teachings, you are growing up out of. You can't stay a child forever. And that's why so many of these people love these fairy tale stories. Oh, the, the black man is God. The black man is righteous by nature. The, the, the black man is the rich. They like hearing all that stuff over and over again because they children. And a child is expecting something better from their parents and you telling these children these fairy tale stories. But you got to grow up sooner or later. If you wish to be an independent people, if you want your own nation, you got to grow up one day. You don't qualify to have your own nation. That's why you don't have it. You don't qualify to be a people because you still have a child like mine. You don't respect nobody or nothing. And you're confused as hell. You're over here. You're over there. You're east. You're west. You don't know what you're about. And those of who are supposed to have awakened minds, you are the head. So if you are confused, if you wishy-washy, what do you expect from the rest of the body? So when Elijah Muhammad died, the body falls. So when Marcus Garvey dies, the body falls. When you're going to grow up? So that's what I want to present to Brother Young Pharaoh. What, what is it that what are you trying to do? Young Marcus, what are you trying to, to do? You just trying to be a scholar? I heard young Pharaoh has the best scholarship in the whole black conscious community. What does that mean? Well, Marcus, young Marcus is just as good as young Pharaoh. What does that scholar? They they great. They young scholars. I don't know if you listen to my videos. You listen to me uh, in a not not just in a fifteen minute lecture, uh, uh, lecture, but in a in a video lecture. How did I come to this point? I come to the to this point. Due to experience, due to my age, where are you getting these things that you're talking about? I'm not copying nobody. These are conclusions and these are the thoughts that I came to the conclusion from within myself. Through trial and error. Over 40 years. And what I present to us is well thought out. That's why you have a problem trying to refute the things that I say. Because they are well thought out. Not based on emotion. Not based on what I think. My opinion. But it's based on reality. And reality deems that whatever is presented must pass the criteria of logic. Being rational, common sense, and reason, and facts. When you believe something, you don't need facts. You don't need logic. You, belief 
does not require those things. But what is it that you brothers, what are y'all looking for in the struggle? I heard brother Farah Allah say, I'm doing this for the people. I'm concerned about the people. How can you be concerned about the people when you don't have concern for yourself? Are you on the right path? Are you headed in the right direction? What is it that you clearly want to be? Do you want to be a scholar? If you want to be a scholar, then I understand why you are doing what you're doing. However, if you are using your scholarship to become a leader, then that's a whole different thing. Because I have never known, and I do not know of any people who have been liberated by scholarship. I read this book. I read that book. Never known it. However, there are many people who have been liberated by the gun. Who have been liberated by the spirit. Who have been liberated by the sword. And this is an option that must be on the table. And when you are involved in a struggle. And your enemy is doing nothing to hinder, hinder you from doing what you're doing. This, this raises a red flag and you must question what's going on. Everything Elijah Muhammad did, the government was there. Everything the Black Panther Party did, the government was there. Everything Marcus Garvey did and all our freedom fighters, Dr. King, whatever they was doing, the government was there. Even here on Social media. I am the only one. Everybody else talks this crap. I take Google to court. I'm the only one who ever took Google to court. They could not prove hate speech. They could not prove I was saying or doing anything that was that violated their policy. But yet and still, they took down over 100 of my channels. They want to make sure that whatever it is I'm saying don't get heard by my audience. Who is my audience? My audience are these who are the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, regardless to what you may call yourself. If you don't fit that definition, if you are not a descendant of a slave, having dark skin born in America, then I'm not talking to you anyway. I can relate to Brother Farah Allah. I heard that he was incarcerated. So, we know about incarceration. Now you tell me, now you tell me this. We as a so-called people in America, we are incarcerated. You as a young man, myself, we understand and have been incarcerated. Now you tell me, can your scholarship, if you were in jail or prison right now, would that help you in any way? No, it would not. I tried it. When I first was incarcerated, I was still a, a black Muslim. And I was talking all that black Muslim stuff. It only made my situation worse. Because you must use the appropriate tool. And so-called scholarship is not the appropriate tool to liberate and free and oppress people. It is what you call putting the cart before the horse. Scholarship and debates and all this. That's for free people. Not for those who are oppressed.
Because those who are oppressed, when you look, when it's all said and done, they are not interested in this scholarship. Because that scholarship is not going to stop a cracker's bullet from growing in your skull. It's not going to stop somebody from discrimination of you trying to get a, a loan or a house or whatever it is in this society. That scholarship, in fact, it might make things worse when they find out you have that mentality. They really might dislike you. If your scholarship, Brother Marcus, if your scholarship for Allah, if it is not inspiring and encouraging the people regardless to your difference, to unite with the other, because you have a common problem, you have a common enemy, and you are similar regardless to whether you call yourself a Kemite or Hebrew Israelite or whatever you may call yourself, we still are similar. If your scholarship, if your teaching are you not, does not produce and does not encourage unification among these who are in similar condition, then it's the wrong scholarship. The nation of Islam, I thought was about that. It has not and has yet to produce unification among the people. The only thing I see the nation of Islam doing is trying to convert us into Muslims. I'm not interested in your religion. I'm not interested in your scholarship. I just want to be free. I want to be treated like a human being. I want to live my short life in peace. I want to treat people as I want to be treated. I don't want your wife. I don't want to rape your baby. I don't even want to pet your dog. So if your scholarship is not encouraging unification, we must take the appropriate actions. Are you a scholar or do you want to be a black leader and since you say that you care about the people, you want to see the people free? Your scholarship can't do that. That's the bottom line. Because the mind has to be liberated. Because even if you get physically free, if your mind is has still has the stench of living under oppression, thinking like the oppressor, just because you get your independence, you are still a slave. The only thing you've done is exchange a pink slave master now you have a black one. I don't want that either. You might as well just stay where you are right now. Do you want to be a scholar or a, a black leader? You have the potential, Pharaoh Allah, to be a great black leader. You, Brother Marcus, you, you sincere and you have the heart and the personality to be a great leader. But it takes more than scholarship. You have to be a thinker. You must understand that you must totally change reality. That's what the race has done to us as dark-skinned people. They change our reality. That's what you must do. And you cannot change reality trying to go back to the past. Talking about pyramids and all this other stuff. Been that, done that, that's the past. It's over and done with. Nice to know. But that which of the past can't help the present, it cannot help the future. That's over and done with. When I speak about in the name of my ancestors, it's just giving honor and respect to those prior to myself. But I understand that the ancestors can't do nothing for me. Only the living, the dead can't do nothing for us. They cannot, they cannot cheer you on. 
They cannot help you in no kind of way. This is your time. And if you don't do it in your time and you run out of time, then it's over. Then you become, then you stop saying, in the name of my ancestors, you become one. And it's done. Why do you think that the nation of Islam and the UNIA, why do you think they fail? Because that which they depended on was taken away from them. And you should want to inspire and condition the people so they can go to the mountaintop with or without you. Like Dr. King said, I might not get there with you, but you're going to the mountaintop. And if you're a leader, and you have enemies that hate your guts and seek your murder, you may not get there with them. So if you want to be a black leader, a so-called black leader, then you should also be ready to die on the job. But we live in this delusion of fantasy world. Just because we we are so selfish. You have to understand. And many soldiers. Many soldiers. They don't die for themselves. They die for the benefit of their nation. Their people. Their family. They may not never see. Their young daughter grow up and get married. But I'm fighting and I'm protecting and defending our nation. So my daughter can do that in peace. Your mind must be liberated. And if your scholarship is not liberating your mind, then it's a waste. And scholarship is for free people. You are one who are who is incarcerated. In religious teachings, it says that the God shall create a new heaven and a new earth. And the former things shall pass away. So as a leader, you, you are creating a new heaven and a new earth for your people. The former things must pass away. But we are holding on for dear life to dead folks. Malcolm X this. Elijah Muhammad that. Nat Turner did this and that's nice to remember them and learn from what they gave us. This is your day. This is your time. And time waits for no one. Either you're going to do it or you're going to perish. The only thing we're going to do is hand the problem to the next generation and they will hate your guts because you should have been able to make it Easier for them to walk. And in fact, you are making it worse with your scholarship. It might be putting money in your pocket, but you say you want to help the people. If you're not liberating the mind, if you're not condition, conditioning the people to accept a new reality and allow the former things to pass away, Then you're doing yourself and them a grave injustice. A leader must have vision. Without vision, the people perish. That means you have a brain. Why we keep talking about what other people did in the past? Don't you have a brain? Be creative. Come up with your own strategy. Do your own thing. There has never been a reality's temple on earth. I am influenced by Nation of Islam. I am influenced by many other sources, perhaps. But it's me. Stop trying to be Malcolm X. Stop trying to be Marcus Garvey or Nat Turner or 
Dr. King or Louis Farrakhan or just whoever. Be Farrah Allah. Be Brother Marcus. This is your day and time. They had their time. I respect and I love Brother Farrakhan. He had his day in the sun. It's over. He's not saying nothing new. Saying the same thing over and over since the 1980s. He has nothing new to say. If a people have no vision, they perish. He no longer has a vision. And the vision that he did have was based on religious teachings. Which the people don't need. That's nice for you and your organization or your group. But as a people, we don't need that because it's too much confusion. Too many religions to try to follow. Too many of those things. And you, why you think we're sitting in the condition that we're in right now? Confusion. Now, I know many people, they dislike what I say. They, they dislike what I say, but I want to see them refute the things that I say. No matter who we are or believe we are, it is very important that we fall under one label, one description. And that description and that label should take us from up out of the oppression that put us in the condition to begin with. When you say black, when you say African, there are no dark-skinned people on this planet. Prove me wrong. I want you to. I've never seen it. I've never seen no dark-skinned people prior to the pink Europeans. I've never seen them call their tribe or their nation black or African. I have spoken to many Africans. Very few of them say, I'm an African. The majority of them that I have spoken to say, I'm from Ghana. I'm from the Republic of Congo. I'm from Somalia. I'm from this tribe. My religion is Yoruba or whatever. Whatever the religion or the tribe may be. They always say something specific. But you have these people trying to make us African. African is a continent that consists of over 50 nations. I heard over 700 languages and countless tribes. They want to put all Africa in one bottle. We Africans. You can't be Africa. You can't put Africa in one little bottle. That's, you can't even put the United States in one bottle. Because the people on the east coast are different from the people on the west coast. Because I know when you go to New York, brothers and sisters in New York, you have there's a certain accent that you that you have. And when you go down south, there's a certain accent that they have, a certain way that they carry themselves and behave. When you go north, there's something different. You can't put all that in one bottle. You can say I'm an American, but then let's get specific. Well, you know, I'm Georgian. I'm born in Georgia. I love me some crayfish and, and whatever. I'm from California. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm from California. They tell you I'm an American, but I'm from here. I'm from California. I'm from Illinois. I'm from Jersey. So when you talk about you African, African what? You from Ghana? Somalia, Rwanda, what are you talking about? We look so silly and dumb. Don't, this is your basic brother, brother Marcus, young brothers and sisters, don't get caught up in that mat. That's crazy. It's insane. You want to be African, that's cool. Be something specific. Stop talking about, I'm African, A-F-R-I-K-A-N. You can't be the whole continent. Those people are not the whole continent. 
And clearly, they can't get along. Here you got a bunch of Europeans and other people, as you say, trying to get the resources of Africa. Why aren't those African people, why aren't they uniting against those who are trying to exploit them? But yet and still, some of us paint Africa like that's the greatest place in the world. I don't want to exchange one slave master for another. I'm not going to Africa so I can have another idiot telling me what to do, what I can and cannot do. I want my own. I want to determine my own destiny, do what I wish from the creativity out of my own mind. I don't want to be an African. I want to be something brand new. So the God comes. <laughs> so the God comes. To make a brand new earth. A new heaven. And the former things shall pass away. That's you and me. We are brand new. We were born up out of slavery. But you don't respect that. You don't respect your own history. You think you have to look at Kemet or Ethiopia or some ancient people when you are fantastic. You don't have to look in the places. Just look at yourself. Look at your grandmother, grandfather, your great 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 grandparents. Look at you. Look at your own history. With all the obstacles in our way, the descendants of slaves born in America. Look where you are now. Nothing can stop you but yourself, because you're not taking the appropriate action in this particular moment in time. And the former things shall pass away. What are the former things? African, you're native from some island, wherever you think your origin is from, it's gone. A brand new heaven, a brand new earth, a new reality. This is who you are. So in the 1960s, 70s, from our mind, not from the mind of the races, not from some religion, from our minds, just like rap music, from the minds of the descendants of slaves born in America, having dark skin, from our mind, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know where it origin from. But I know that we call ourselves the people of soul. And under the people of soul, you could be a black Christian. You could be a black Muslim. You could be a Hebrew Israelite. You could be whatever you want to be. But during that period of time, I heard none of these dark skinned people complain, don't call me. I, that soul stuff. I don't want it. We danced on Soul Train. All those brothers and sisters danced on Soul Train. I'm very sure that they had different beliefs. But on Soul Train, they was under one music, and that was the music of soul. James Brown was the godfather of soul. <laughs> Hit me. Let me kiss myself. Aretha Franklin, the queen of soul. It was all about the soul. Remember, I remember as a child, we would give ourselves five on the black hand side. In the hole, you got soul. And the devil came in because soul was primarily connected to music. And the racists came in and changed the name of the music 
turned it from soul to R&B, rhythm and blues. So that brings up the question, what is it that the devil wants from you? The devil wants from you and asks of you, give me your soul. Because the soul in religious terms is the essence of life. That what makes you alive. And the devil wants your soul. And that's what they've done. Selling your soul to the devil. And once our soul was sold to the devil, our condition has grown worse and worse and worse. Because now, we were the people of soul. Now we're right back to, I'm a, I'm a uh, Kemite. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm, but when the soul was among us, because it is the essence of life, that bound all of us under one. In fact, in fact, sometimes black power and soul power, they would join together because we are dark-skinned people. But when you add soul to it, it reminds you, you are much more than a skin color. I'm not going to play the games of races. Wow. So, what is it that you want? To do. See, to be truthful, if if young brothers like yourself and Sarah Sun said and Dr. Umar, if you if you guys began to do the things in an appropriate manner, I would have nothing to say. I would happily sit back in the cut and support you. And chilly, and wish you the best in luck. And I wouldn't want nothing to happen to you. I'll be your security. That's what it's all about. I'm not sitting around here trying to get celebrity. And some of y'all have failed for this celebrity thing because people listen to you. Just because people listen to you don't mean that you're saying the right thing. At the right time. Spike Lee in his movie said, do the right thing. But do the right thing at the right time. You want to be scholarly? Get free. Liberate your mind. Free the people. That's not freeing the people. That's making us more confused. Because your number one priority should be unification. Your number one priority should be either land where you were born or land elsewhere or you overthrow your oppressor. If you're not thinking on that type of, you don't have that mindset, then the only thing you're doing is playing a game. And that's why people don't want to mess with me. I'm not here to play a game. I'm more serious than a heart attack. Sick of the devil. You talk about a bang on the beast. When you gonna start doing it? Running your mouth with your scholarship. That's not banging on no beast. Keep talking about Africa. Where is your connection? How are you building with Africa? You're not doing nothing. All you're doing is running your mouth. Because you're not creative. You really don't know what to do. And don't want to admit it. These people really don't want to admit. They don't know what to do. Well, I will tell you. I really may not know what to do. But I will use my mind. My creative mind. We're going to get something done. And we're going to be successful. And the people will support you. They're not going to support scholarship and this other confusion. But when they see somebody acting in the appropriate manner, whether they might not fully agree, 
But they were like, that's they they doing it. They doing it. It has happened before. And you brothers, and Sarah Student said it, and some of y'all younger people, you should be on the forefront and you should be guiding the people in a certain direction. And even if you can't get there with them, you know when you take your last breath, they're going to make it. They're going to make it. No more killing black leaders and the movement fall down. No more of that. This can only happen when we mature. So with that said, thank you, brothers. I hope that you give me a call. We can we can continue this conversation. Any any of you. And I hope that this will inspire and encourage us to think and start looking at things in a different manner. Use your mind. Be who you are. And you will see that your condition will almost change like it was overnight. Until next time, important love, peace, and soul.